All right. Algebra 1, Lesson 1 Review. Let's see if this will let me write on the board. All right. Looks like it will. All right. Identify the irrational number. What do we know about irrational numbers besides just being able to identify one on a list? How do we, how do we identify an irrational number? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. She said it can't be solved. What's that? has two factors. Um, you're thinking of a prime number. The ones that don't stop. Okay, so let's be more specific because, you know, I could go forward, you know, from my decimal point this way, right? And that wouldn't necessarily be irrational. But we're saying first it's probably a decimal, right? A decimal or a radical whose decimal does two things and it has to do both of these things in order to be irrational. Who knows what they are? It has to repeat. Okay, she says that an irrational decimal has to repeat. Is that true? Can anybody give me an example of an irrational number, like a famous irrational? Pi. Okay, so take the irrational that you know, right, which is pi, and what do you know about pi? Because it, what you know about pi will apply to other irrational numbers. What do we know about pi? It, the decimal doesn't end. And what else? What else do we know about the decimal? It doesn't repeat. Very good. So we're talking about something when turned into a decimal, whether it's a radical or already a decimal, its decimal is not going to repeat and it's not going to end. Okay. Now we ought to be able to, one, look at a list of numbers and see at least which ones are rational, right? What numbers in number one are rational? Three. Okay, good. What else? Eight. Okay. What about 0 0.54? Is that rational? Because it ends, right? Comes to a stop. What about this negative radical 9? What is that? Is that rational or irrational? Somebody said irrational. Okay. So if I plug this in my calculator and I try to get a decimal, right, I'm going to get something that doesn't repeat and doesn't end. Is that accurate? Caden's shaking his head no. What, what are you going to get? What is radical 9? If we got rid of the negative, right, if we covered up the negative here, what is radical 9? three. So this is negative one times radical nine. If radical nine solves to be three, then all I'm saying is that that's negative three. Is that irrational? No. All right. But radical 45, okay. Radical 45 is made up of two radicals. Radical five times radical nine. Okay. Now nine will simplify to three sorry, 3, but square root of 5 is a prime number, right? 5 is a prime number, and the square root of any prime is irrational, okay? So square root of 45, somebody plug that in your graphing calculator, or calculator, whatever you got. Tell me what you get for square root of 45. Six point seven zero eight two zero. Right, keeps going on, but we don't see a pattern, and it doesn't appear to be ending. Okay, so square root of forty-five. These might be answers that you were really quick to get to, but uh, I am hoping that you understand understand them, how to get there. Okay, let's look at number two, the rational number. Identify the rational number. All right. Let's identify. Well, let's go ahead and identify the irrational numbers. Is pi irrational? Yes. Okay. Um, any number over zero. Can we divide a number by zero? No, we can't. If we plug it in our calculator, we're going to get undefined. That's an example of an irrational. All right. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven is made up of. Uh, what is that? That's three times nine. Three is a prime number. Right? So it's the square root of 3 times the square root of 9. 9 will come out as 3, but 3 won't come out. Right? So square root of 27, I'm going to double check it with my calculator and see that the decimal doesn't repeat or end. It 
doesn't repeat, doesn't end, does it? Okay. Now, what if we had 0 0.65 repeating all by itself? Would I know that that's rational? Why? Because it repeats. Okay, good. Right? It's rational because it repeats. All right? Let's keep moving. We won't answer all these questions today. Okay? I think there's like 50 of them in here. Okay, number three. We've got 8 squared minus 15 divided by 5 plus 3 times 3 cubed. What type of question is this? What, what am I using here to solve this? Order of operations. Do you guys know how to use order of operations? All right, you guys know that you have the answer key at the bottom of this, right? Okay, so I'm not going to solve that, right? Unless somebody in here wants it solved. I'm just going to go over what you need to know. Number four is an order of operations, right? Okay, let's look at number five real quick. One-fourth cubed, all right? That means that I'm going to take one and cube it, and I'm going to take four and cube it, okay? What is one cubed? One. What is four cubed? That's four times four times four. No, because it's not four times three. It's four times four times four. It's what? 64. Okay? All right. So, but that's, it's, it's good that we can see that we, that's the kind of mistake that we'll make. Okay, we need to understand the exponents. I'm not multiplying that number by that. Okay, I'm multiplying itself by that many times. All right, what do we know about absolute value? It's always positive. All right, so 5 minus 6 is negative 1, but the absolute value of negative 1 is, but I've got a negative 1 sitting outside that absolute value. So the moment I drop the absolute value with the positive 1, I'm getting what? Negative 1, good. 8 minus 5 is? 3, absolute value of 3 is? 3 times negative 1 is? Negative 3, good. All right, 1 minus 5 sixths. The way I would look at this is 6 sixths minus 5 sixths, right? Okay, get a common denominator, right? Does that, does that make sense to everybody in here? That we all understand how I got 6 sixths? All right, so that leaves me with 6 minus 5, 1 sixth, right? And the absolute value there is 1 sixth. Okay, number 9, still absolute value, or sorry, not absolute value, but order of operations. So 8 plus 7 first, 7 plus 3, all right, then 4 times 15 minus 10. Okay, and go on from there. Okay, let's come up to number 10. A uh, rectangular carpet is 8 feet wide by 13 feet long. Its area is 8 by 13 square feet. A circular carpet has a radius of 4 feet. Its area is 3.1 times 4 squared or pi r squared. How much larger in square feet is the rectangular carpet than the circular carpet? Well, that's just a simple matter of go ahead and multiply 8 by 13. Right? Get that answer. Then take 3.14 times 4 squared. Get that answer. Subtract the smaller one from the bigger one, right? Anything here that's too hard? Okay. All right. At this point, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to hit pause on the video here for a second. I don't want you to look down through and try to find a question that you want me to answer. Okay. All right, so we're going to answer, we'll start at the beginning. We'll start at question number 23. 23, identify the subsets of real numbers that apply to radical 16 over 2. Well, I'm going to try to, let's simplify it, okay? Square root of 16 is what? 4. So that's giving me 4 over 2, right, which is 2, right? Okay, which means this should fall under pretty much every subset of numbers, correct? So our first subset of numbers that we're going to get are real numbers, correct? We've got real, then we have rational, okay, it's not an irrational number, right? Then we have whole, or is it, yeah, 
natural. We have integers, right? It's an integer and whole. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, if I went down, question 23. Let's look at something here real quick. 23, what I would do, um, just to make sure that I understand this, is go back and look at lesson one, classifying real numbers. So I look at that chart and see what fits inside of what. Okay. All right. So let's see if we fit rational integer. So I should have had integer. Um, let's see. It should have been rational, integer, whole, natural. So they've got some things that I think are a little out of order. Real should have been towards the top. But integer, whole, and natural. Okay. All right. Does that answer that for you? Okay. Next one on the list that we want to cover is number 25. Okay, 25, is the set of irrational numbers closed over addition? Okay, basically what we're saying in 25 is if I add irrational numbers, am I still going to get an irrational number? Okay, uh, let's see, i got to find my, um, let's see, 25. Okay, so I kind of have to, you kind of have to think outside of the box here a little bit. Let's take an irrational number. Let's take one. What's our what's our most popular irrational number? Pi. Okay. Um, so there's pi, and it says, "Is it closed over addition?" So I need to add something to pi that's going to get something that's not irrational. All right. Well, what if I added negative pi? Is zero irrational? No, it's rational. So we would say, no, irrational numbers are not closed over addition. Pi plus negative pi equals zero, which is rational. Okay? The example that they use in the answer key is five and negative five. Okay? The sum of those two things is not an irrational number. Okay? Who's, was that yours, Blayton? Whose question was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was kind of addressing it to the wrong person. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So just be aware of those possibilities. All right. So that's 23, 25. Who was 28? Okay. Cadence was 28. Okay. Uh, 28. The number, I guess we can do that. The number of line segments between endpoints is one half parentheses n squared minus n. We want to use the formula to find the number of segments between seven points. Okay, so points, this is where we substitute, okay, our number of points in for our variable up here. So what we're saying is one half, and instead of n squared minus n, we're going to do seven squared minus seven. Is that clear? Okay. So 7 squared is 49, 49 minus 7 is 42. So then we have 1 half 42, which is the same as taking 42 divided by 2, which is 21. Okay, so that's going to be the number of line segments. Okay? Are you good there? All right. So that was 28. Who was 48? Was that... I was back here. All right. 48. All right. Identify the terms in the expression. Okay. Identify the terms in the expression. The terms, the terms in an expression are the things that are separated by plus or minus. So 9MN is a term. 6p is a term. 7n over 3m is a term. Okay? Just want to make sure that I got all of that right. Yep. Does that help you out? Okay. 
All right, and finally, 27. 27, let's come back up here. Okay, simplify m cubed times m. Okay, so what exponent does this m over here have? Does it have an exponent? Okay, so there's a 1 there. What do I do with variables? What do I do with their exponents when I'm multiplying same base variables? I add them. So 3 plus 1 is 4. So my answer is m to the 4th. Does that answer that for you? Okay, just as a quick refresher, what if this was m cubed squared? What would I do with those exponents? What? You multiply. So this is m to the 6th. So let's say we had changed this a little bit. What if this had been a 2? There I would have gotten m to the 5th. There's a difference here between adding and multiplying. Okay? But you're multiplying the exponents. All right, that was the last question you guys had that you've told me. Are there any others now that you think about it? All right, so I'm going to hit stop on this video.